Welcome back to the Youth Academy RTG. Appreciate your patience in waiting for this first episode of Season 3. If you saw the community post I popped up on YouTube, you know I've been on well over the past few days. Running at about 80%, so forgive me if I'm not full gusto over the next couple of episodes, but hopefully uh, you'll still enjoy nonetheless. We have a new season set out in front of us here in the Road to Glory. In, spoilers incoming, a new league, of course, after being promoted via the title last year. We are now a League One side and find ourselves in the third tier of the English divisions. Now we have fresh objectives from the board this season and fresh objectives from you guys as fans as well. The fan objectives continue. My Cambridge United have come up with us as well from the league below, so very pleased about that. Hopefully they don't get relegated this season. Hopefully we don't get relegated this season. The squad is looking strong. However, I am particularly nervous about this opening summer transfer window and what may well happen to a number of our higher rated players. Barry Knox is new at right back, called up via the youth system. And I'm expecting bids to come in for Morris, Jack, Baca, Fernandez, Samaras, etc. We have some players available as backup. Others we're hoping to get brought to our attention with our new scouts, of course. Having gone up a level, gone up a, a league, we have moved our youth scouts up a level. So our chief scout now has four star judgment and our two regular scouts have three star judgment. I don't have any obvious weaknesses in depth in any given position, hence why they're just out looking for anyone at this particular moment in time and of course whilst still being in leagues one or two we are only concentrating on domestic talent in the united kingdom or great british isles as we stand once we reach the championship we'll start sending scouts out to the rest of europe and then once we reach premier league we'll go global so what are our objectives this season we know what we'd like to achieve uh, personally but what the board want from us this year is to sign at least three players younger than 20 years of age with greater potential, etc, etc. That should get done regardless of what happens this year. The longer term one, less likely as we get higher up the divisions. Obviously, players that come through the youth setup are in theory slightly further and further behind the power curve of our squad. But in these early stages still, we should potentially be able to do that in the first couple of seasons. Especially if we find a couple of bangers via the youth system. Brand exposure, a streak of five games without defeat at home. That appears to be in any competition. So we could win or go undefeated in the Papa John's Trophy as well as the Carabao Cup. And that could add towards the streak. One crucial player assigned to a forward position. We're not planning on buying anyone as it stands. But obviously if I need to tick something to... Uh, appease the board then I shall do for some reason my confidence rating is 58 and weak despite winning the title and getting promoted and ticking everything last year other than the FA Cup but EA gonna EA in the short term they want me to sign two crucial players and make a profit of 21 and a half million pounds financially not happening but domestic success is fight for promotion I don't actually know what that means does that mean Finishing the top two? Does it mean finishing the playoffs? Does it mean finishing just outside the playoffs would be good enough for the board? Not exactly sure what that entails, but we'll try and finish top half if we can this year. What will be the most important thing is to keep hold of those best play better players that we have. Now, of course, we have renewed the fan objectives for the season, so they are as follows. Emmett actually had another one that had many thumbs up in the comment section on YouTube. So he has another one in this year, which is take eight points in the Derby games. Of course, our local rivals this season are going to be Derby County, as we're based in Nottingham. Derby just over the other side of the motorway. And of course, the Chesnoy Derby against Cambridge United as well. With them having come up, we shall try and take points off them as well. Eight points from four Derby games is the aim. Wayne suggested completing the League One season with less than 15 defeats. Now, as a newly promoted side, that's the challenge. As a side that has players of quality, I'm hoping that will be more straightforward. However, if we end up losing some of those good players, then less than 15 defeats might not be as straightforward as we think. 
Matt suggests scoring a perfect hat trick. I don't think we did that at all in the opening two seasons, so that'll be a challenge as well. Michael has scored 10 goals from set pieces this season. That's either direct from a free kick or indirect from a free kick or corner. And Glenn suggests winning five games from a losing position this season. Now, that'll be a challenge because we'll end up having to go behind to then try and fight back. And TJ suggests taking five points from last year's relegated championship sides, which were Blackpool, Portsmouth and Wigan. They are our fan objectives for this season. So without any further ado, everything is laid out in front of us now. We're not planning on buying anyone. I do have everybody that is on the Patreon listed in my transfer hub still. And I have updated the spreadsheet to account for that. So everybody's ratings are now entered in here. Those of you that are in the VIP tier on the Patreon, uh, do drop by the stream and I can keep you up to date with this in real time. It won't make the YouTube video more so than maybe opening episode of a season, final episode of a season, and maybe once in the middle as well. But I am intrigued to see if any of those of you that started as free agents get a second move in this summer transfer window. We will keep an eye on that as time progresses. But you've all developed now into the early to mid 70s so we might be seeing some big moves sooner rather than later although a couple of you are already at big clubs as it is right let's get cracking you scouts are out we pray for no emails about incoming bids and then we can hopefully start the league one season with our squad intact as ever please do drop the video a like if you're enjoying this save make sure you subscribe to the channel and you won't miss out on any more let's get going with season three shall we for those of you on YouTube, let's show you what our kits look like this season, shall we, actually? Of course, new kits for the new season. We have a new ground as well. I say new ground. Technically, it is a new ground because I've had to obviously change the actual stadium in-game. But in theory, what we've done is just added a, a roof and a bit of an improvement to capacity to our previous stadium. So we are playing at a new Patreon park. So you'll notice that when we actually get to the uh, league games, we are playing at a slightly bigger ground, which has uh, now, I think, roofs on all sides. These are our kits, though, this season. I love that home kit, by the way. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The away kit looks as you see it there, and the third kit is pretty in pink this season. I actually really, really like those three kits. Thank you for your suggestions this year, of course, as well as ever. And hopefully we could just get a bloody win in this one. Go on, let's. Oh, so far so good. Touch wood with regards uh, potential bids for first team players. We have had a position change for Logan Brown. He's gone from a 61 rated cam to a 64 rated striker. And on paper is better than our icon, Kai Connick, in every area. Other than a couple of inches in height. And his weak foot and skill moves. That's intriguing. So we're very, very keen now on getting him some first team football. But of course, we're hoping that dynamic potential kicks in for Kai. And he can get another decent season. And hopefully help attempt to keep us up this year. Fleming is currently on my bench. But I think lone football for him and someone's starting lineup is going to be better than sitting on my bench for sure. And we have capable enough players to fill in for him should he depart. There's been some growth already. Jack is up to 73, Morris 74, Edward 67, Samaras 70 and Knox 63. Castro is now back fully fit. Time for game one of the brand new League One season away from home at the Kassam. Oxford United, the first side we face as our new level, are playing a 4-3-3. Thank the Lord it's not a five back Hopefully, there'll be less of those now we're out of League 2. They are pretty decent in most areas. Cameron Brannigan, their captain, is their highest rated player at 71. But they are lacking in depth for sure. And one of their centre-backs is late 50s, as he's their second best centre-back. Now, we've got a full-strength selection available to us. Playing in our brand new, probably Shazam-themed away kit for the very first time. And having... Not lost anyone in the transfer window thus far. You'd say we're favourites for this. We are one of those sides that are going to hopefully come up, 
and then challenge for immediate back-to-back -back promotions. Whether we see it through or not remains to be seen. But I would certainly expect us to be there or thereabouts this year if we can keep the squad together. Boyle looking for the runner. Morris, who's in behind, tucks it back. Help it on its way. Kai Connick picks up where he left off. We've... Well, I'm considering retiring the number nine shirt. Although, to be honest, Kai Connick was even better than Jensen Glover. And maybe Kai Connick deserves the number nine shirt more so than Glover deserves the number nine to be retired in his honour. I'll let you guys in the comment section decide that. I do need to have a go through my uh, squad numbers, actually, and just readjust some of those, which we'll certainly do in between games one and two. But... Picking up where he left off last season, Kai Connick gets us underway in League One. Corner from the far side for Oxford as they look to respond immediately. Brannigan short to Brown. And in here then to Junjin Wu. And Mfuni, who's that late 50s rated centre-back. Needed saving for Fernandez though, over the top of the bar. Here come Oxford with Corb down the right. Tucked back inside to Goodrum. Have to bring, bring Ben Jack out of position here. Barry Knox deals with that well enough at the back. Debut for him, of course, here. Our new 63 now rated right back. The first debut we're giving this season. Hopefully the first of many for players that might make it to the starting 11. Fernandez makes the save in his new goalkeeper kit. One thing to mention to you guys as well, potentially with regards to that Kai Connick number and Jensen Glover, etc. Irregardless of Jensen Glover's impact... Perhaps, because Kai has been so iconic for us, he could maybe, rather than adjusting to take the number nine shirt, maybe he could do a Thierry Henry, perhaps, and make that number 14 the iconic number. And in actual fact, he dons that shirt throughout his career, and the number 14 is associated with Kai Connick, rather than Kai Connick being associated with... A regular number. Maybe he himself makes that number 14 that he's had since he joined us. The iconic number for him. That's the alternative. So, Kai Connick, number 9? Or Kai Connick, number 14 for life? Burn. Boyle, even not Burn. Look, getting forward well. Cross is decent. Kai brings it down. And at full stretch, McGinty makes the save with his mullet fully intact. Can we get a second before half-time? Backers underneath. It's not going to reach him. Kai could win that. He has done well. And Edwards! Wide. All right. Oxford fight back. They've had a number of chances in this game already. And they might be about to have one more. They have. And they've scored it in the 34th minute. Jin Jin Wu does find the equaliser for Oxford United. And we are pegged back. Smith. Lovely little dink over the top. Jin Jin Wu bearing down on goal. And going for it. And... Well, needed saving by Fernandez. I felt like he could have done a bit better with that. Maybe even held it. I don't think when we signed him, Fernandez, that he was as tall as he is now. But I'm pretty sure he was smaller than that when we signed him. Doesn't matter how tall he is, though. He's conceded two today. And what started like it was going to be a pretty simple start to League One, he's not ending that way. Spins well. Looking for Boyle. He's in. And Kai will get there. Race around the outside. The man probably should have squared that. Can we get to it underneath it with anyone? No yet. Oh, it's going to unfortunately bounce for Oxford. And that will probably take us to half time, won't it? 2-1 to the U's, unfortunately. I'm going to need support here. It's going to go again, Kennedy. Edwards is through here. Now he had, did let himself down last season with some of his finishing, Tom Edwards. And has done so again here, unfortunately. The shot on target, but relatively comfortably enough saved. Out wide to Goodrum. Delivered brilliantly. Oh, what a goal. Those that may perhaps have been worried that with the growth of the squad, that it might be just a simple, oh, promotion, promotion, promotion in the RTT, like sometimes it is in some series. Well, Oxford have other ideas. We certainly weren't conceding goals of that quality last year, were we? Welcome to League One. Boyle, lovely turn. Finds substitute Fleming. Who finds starter Samaras. Many in the middle to look for. Including potentially Logan Brown. He's hooked away to Pearson who's off the bench here. Whew. 
He struck it well enough. Kennedy will look to turn and beat his man. And maybe we can get one back. Put a bit of power on the cross. It's a really good delivery that everybody misses. Goodrum will clear it for Oxford. And away from home, the brand new away kit in its first outing tastes defeat. And as per one of the fan objectives this season, which was avoid defeat in less than 15 games. Oh, God, Kennedy. Well, we're starting with one. <laughs> 3-1 defeat away from home and Oxford in a very hotly contested tie that had quite a few efforts in it for both sides. 18 shots total. We taste defeat in our new league. Oh, scout reports. Hello. A bid for Gavin Young, which we will delegate to just alone, but hopefully that will go through. Right. Our first scout reports of the new season. That's not a great start. Neither is that or that. Ooh. I doubt it, Charles, but we'll give you the benefit of the doubt and have a look. Okay, not not amazing so far. That might be good. Gavin Reese, 75 to 94, although he's not starting at too high a rating. And then from Scotland, anything worthwhile? We'll give it another month, but I doubt it. And no, there as well. No, I'm, I'm only gonna I'm only gonna need the best of the best really now if they're gonna come in and have a massive impact. So let's see. Uh, Gavin Rees, physically not bad, technically, oh dear, um, but certainly potentially could be at least half decent, it's a case of how long it's going to take him to actually get there, and then Senor Parsons, again physically not bad, technically he's not a striker, but he's more of a cam with dribbling curve and ball control, again don't think there's going to be much come of that either. So not the best of starts on the pitch. And so far, not the best of starts off the pitch either. Uh, Forest Green picked up a point on their first match day. We did not. But this is our first home game of the new year at Octagon Park, as it's actually called. But in-game, of course, we've renamed it Patreon Park. Now, I didn't do that away kit justice. This is probably my favourite home kit we might have ever had in a creative club save. So let's do this one justice. This is the new ground. Uh, actually, we don't have roofs on uh, every stand. In fact, we only have a roof at one end, I think. But we do now have a stand on each end. We were uh, one end without a stand, of course, last season. Uh, rather than just wait for that to come up, I might as well pause it and just quickly show you the Forest Green starting lineup. They're playing a 4 1 4 1 with Ross Doohan in goal. O'Keefe, Godwin Melif, McCourt, and Robson with Charlie Savage sat holding. And then Altimira, Brown, Hendry, and Stevens. I know Stevens is up top with Mukairu on the left as a left winger rather than a left mid. We are uh, growing still, actually, with Kaikonic now up to 64, which is good news. Uh, if we could score again, that'd be great. If we can get some points on the board, that'd be even better. And Robson down the line. Knox can't get there. Hendry into Stevens and Fernandez at full stretch to turn it round the post. Corner for them. Brown will take short to Mikairu, who's kicked it straight against Kennedy. Keeps it alive by denying them a corner, but actually very nearly set them up for a goal. He also played Stevens onside there and, well... He won't have a better chance, will he? Literally one-on-one, -on -one, ten yards out. And he hit it about the same distance wide. He won't go central, we'll go out wide. Because Knox can get this back into... Oh, Kai was the plan. Edwards going solo. Edwards! Off the bar, can you believe it? Still no goal this season for Edwards. So we'll go centrally here to Samaras. Samaras will now look for Morris, who could get this quickly back to Kai Connick quite developed as I hoped it might but we could get Morris in here and Isaac Morris gives us a 1-0 lead the first goal to go in at our new ground or newly improved ground should we say is for us and not our opposition thank god for that and weirdly the kit worn by the fans in the stand doesn't look the same as the kit that's actually being worn by the players on the pitch GG EA well done lads Kennedy here comes Knox on the overlap. In the middle there is Edwards. He's going to beat his man. He did it! He's on the score sheet! Tommy Edwards can do the business. That is 2-0 to the Phoenixes.
it might just be win one on match day one in the new ground. Ball played quickly into Stevens. Jack's picked up an injury here. Woo! I'm slightly worried for a moment. Uh, and it, they're mentioning it in commentary as well, so I'm going to have to take him off here. We'll bring Lavery on for the time being, although we are hoping to train him or are in the process of training him as a midfielder. Hopefully, that's not something that will keep Jack out longer term. I didn't even see where he got hurt, to be honest. Little Savage. Sounds like some sort of rapper name, doesn't it? As Little comes off the bench for Charlie Savage for them. Boyle back to Kai. Oh, you know what? It's just going to open up for him. Kai Connick! That's three goals! That'll be three points! We are off the mark in League One. Connick, Kennedy and Pearson. Oh, lovely touch. Pearson in behind for maybe a fourth off the bench. The youngster scoring his first goal for the club. We have a fourth goal difference turned around. We were minus two. We'll now be plus two and with plus three points. Very happy with that indeed. We couldn't have asked for a better response to welcome in life at League One at Patreon Park with its new fourth stand four goals to go with the four stands that's gone down very nicely indeed this time i'll remember to do the numbers in between games and we'll also prepare for the oh we've dominated that one didn't we prepare for the cup game against bristol city which will sim and then the third and final uh, league game of the day so far so good with regards bids for our better players Please don't let me have jinxed myself by saying that. Carabao Cup against Bristol City. No draw for this competition whatsoever. R rotated 11 started and with a sim. Expecting to go out and indeed doing so. But the opportunity for some sort of first team football for a couple of fringe players. The final played game is against Rotherham who have at some point come back down from the championship above must have been after season one because they were not one of the three sides relegated uh, last year back down from the championship a couple of loan deals that look like they're going to go through lawrence is going to go to fleetwood you are in our division and actually at the side we face next after rotherham at the beginning of tomorrow's episode still though as we reach that match day no bids yet for any of our higher rated players don't ask me how I'm getting away with this. I'm really not sure. But so far, so good. Ninth after two games. Hopefully higher after three. Rotherham. Guess what? Five at the back. They're all right, though. Not only are they all right, pretty bloody good. 72 rated goalkeeper. 70s in the majority of the defence. Late 60s or 70s in the midfield. And late 60s up top. Rotherham, one of the better sides in League One this season. But we are one of them as well, we believe. And every kit has now had an outing today. The away, then the home. And now pretty in pink in the third. Hopefully, the overall result will be just as beautiful as our kits this season. Straight into Morrison. Thanks for letting me change player game. Morrison back to Boyle. Morrison back to Boyle. <laughs> Castro! Oh, held by Johansson. It was Morris back to Boyle. And Kai can't win the header. It hit someone's hand. It hit one of their hands. All right, cheers then. Samaras from distance. Oof! Drawing the save out of Johansson. Samaras is our midfield maestro, isn't he? And that right foot is a traction engine, as the phrase goes. Backer! Oh, Mitch can't match it into the back of the net. See, does anyone else have a better free kick? No, we've got a couple of other players in the starting lineup. No, nobody's got a better free kick than Morris. Isaac Morris from the edge of the box for 1 0 to the Phoenixes. Tipped onto the bar by the goalkeeper. Hell of an effort from our highest rated player, our scout future star. And he might just get an assist instead. Kai! Shot blocked by the defender. So close to an opening goal, but there's not one yet. Rathbone. Oh, it's just in behind. And Coyote from close range. Mitch Bakker, even closer range. Corner for Rotherham. 
Decent delivery by Rotherham as well. The header's looping. Dangerous. Boyle just makes sure. Another corner for Rotherham. This is getting worrisome now. A replay then. Goal line decision system from the free kick from Morris that was, as you can tell, expertly saved by the goalkeeper, tipping it onto the woodwork. It did, in fact, hit the bar. Mm, we'll go back this way. Samaras. Oh, it's opened up. Edwards on his left over the bar. Brilliant opportunity. Trying to find the corner on his favoured side, but he can't find the back of the net. It just opened up. And it oh, was actually a bit further away than it initially might have looked. I need to get out of the habit, if I can, of finessing with these lower rated players in situations like that, because unless they've got the finesse shot trait, it just doesn't really work with the sliders set up as they currently are, which are working at League One level, evidently, as they did at League Two level. We did some testing prior to starting the save, and it seems that the sliders we've got actually work all the way throughout the hierarchy of the game. From League Two all the way to the top end of the Premier League, this slider set works all the way through, which is fantastic and saves us some problems and headaches trying to work out what to do with it throughout the course of the save if it didn't work like that. Thankfully it does. And so far, life in League One is pretty unpredictable, isn't it? Heavy defeat, heavy win, nil-nil draw. Samaras, see pal. Saw you coming, jinked around you. Castro, forward into Connick. Been kept quiet here so far today, Kai. Kennedy in the box. Kai is back there. And so is Samaras. He's been itching for a goal today. But he's still waiting for it. Over the bar again from him. Forward in Rotherham possession. Thankfully, Mitch does really well, I was about to say. Then he doesn't do very well at all. That was one of those scenarios where, unfortunately, the sliders come to bite us. With the pass error as high as it is, occasionally you get a duff contact on it. Lovely interception. And then, well, I can't tell you what that is. The shot from them isn't great either. It's just kind of skewed it in towards that bottom corner. And the keeper just can't quite extend his leg to it. We trail by a goal to nil away from home. Jordan Hugel on the hour. Let's not lose two of our opening three games at this level, please. Boyle inside. Samaras looking for Kai Connick, but... Oh, they've made a mistake at the back now. Is it their turn to ruin their own chances of potentially getting a result? Castro twice denied by Johansson in goal. Worth a go. Worth a go indeed. Morris with the delivery. Up we go. Mitch back as header. Saved by Johansson again. And Kennedy. A 1-2 maybe. Doesn't look likely. Pearson through there though. Come on, Kai. He doesn't quite take it in his stride. He's just got the legs to hold off the defender. He doesn't have the finish. He's been kept quiet here today, Kai Connick. And unfortunately on that occasion, despite the five-star weak foot, his finishing lets him down. Riascos. I mean, what a ping that would have been had it found its man. Jeez Louise, the vision on that. Pretty insane. Edwards going to try and beat the man. Poor decision for me to try and do so. And Jack's pass lets him down now as well. Is it going to be two defensive mistakes? No. Well, yes, but not defensive mistakes that cost us a goal at the other end. Samaras forward to Boyle. It has to be now. Time is running out for us. Inside, it will find Edwards, who's got support. And Logan Brown beats his man. Logan Brown over the bar with the last kick of the game. He could have made his name in a Chesnoid shirt. In a Phoenix's shirt, in an AFC shirt. Unfortunately, at the minute, not worth the shirt, Logan Brown. Yet to see his promise as a young 16-year-old that has some good potential to actually show itself. Two defeats in the first three games at League One level. The first one outplayed. The second game, we did very well. The third game, well, 15 shots to their seven. I think just unlucky, probably, on this occasion against Rotherham. I am not too concerned about our potential for relegation this season. I'm led to believe by my live chat that the fight for promotion in the managerial objectives is quite frankly just finish anywhere in the automatic or promotion player uh, positions. So we need to finish top six 
to satisfy the board this year. And so far, with Jenkins going out on loan, we are currently 15th. But there is a long way to go. Plenty more games to be played. Jesus Christ, he's more ginger than I thought he was. Lee Jenkins off to FC Andorra for the rest of the season. A number of young players out on loan for us now as the squad thins out. We haven't yet, as now Lawrence goes out on loan as well, we haven't yet looked like needing to buy anyone in. I don't feel like I want to buy anyone in either, if I'm completely honest, because I'd rather let those youngsters at the club as another goes out on loan as well. It's Dave McLean going to Citadella. I'd love the young players that we have at the club that have come through our youth system to be the ones to get the job done and to grow well enough to see them develop into players that can really do the business for us here at AFC Chesnoid. Fleetwood, Wigan and MK Dons to come in the next one tomorrow. Now, of course, Wigan are one of the relegated sides from last year. So if we can take any points from that game, then we will be adding something to the, uh, to the fan objectives. Of course, we have unfortunately lost two of the opening three of the league season, meaning that the fan objectives now has an extra tick on it. In fact, let me bring that up for you now so that I've uh, just updated it there uh, on my Photoshop. So, uh, man my managerial rating is actually shot up now, which is nice to see. Actually more reflective of what the scenario would be in real life in this situation. But, as you can see there, none of eight, because we haven't played Derby or Cambridge yet. Two defeats of 15 so far. No perfect hat-tricks. No goals from set pieces either. No wins from losing positions, only defeats from losing positions. And tomorrow, we might just be able to add some points against a previously relegated side from the championship. That's all for episode one of season three. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the new year and the new challenge in the league above. And it certainly looks like it is going to be a challenge in the league above indeed. It's not going to have things all go our own way this season, which I like. For now, that's all for today. Thank you for joining me. Do join me tomorrow for more. I'll see you then.